Hey guys, Dan here, and I'm kind of rushing to put this video up because it's the weekend and I want everybody who's trying to figure out what in God's green earth is going on with the lights in their Dodge. Um, I want to help you out. So, um, hey, let me give you the symptoms first, okay? This is going to be, this is a rough video, guys. Very little editing. I just want to get it out there. Here's the symptoms. You got... I have a 2001 Dodge Dakota SLT crew cab, six-cylinder engine, power door locks with a key fob, uh, and that matters, okay? That all matters. I'm not bragging <coughs> about my 2001 Dodge Dakota SLT crew cab that I'm sitting in right now that I got for $4,000. That's right, $4,000 with 103,000 miles on it. I know, I know. Backstory. So, I'm looking for a truck for my side hustle business, which I'll and I'll give you guys that information at some point. But I do have another business going on. Um, it's not lawn care, but I needed a truck for it, and so I'm looking and looking and looking. And everything I'm finding is like eight, nine, ten thousand dollars, right? I know you're like Dan. I'm here because I want to talk about my lights flashing, and you said you'd get to it. I know, but you know I'm long winded, so suck it up, Buttercup. I needed a truck. So I'm looking and I'm looking and I'm looking. Facebook Marketplace, I find this truck, right? Looks good in the pictures, brand new tires, new battery, new power steering system. Um, nice, you know, 3,500 bucks. I called the lady, I said, I'll give you 3,000 right now. She said, sweetheart, I got 12 people coming today that'll give me asking price. I said, babe, I'll give you 4,000 right now. She said, bring it. I went there, 3,500, gave her $4,000, drove the truck home. Wonderful great really no issues i put another four thousand into it you're like oh my god you got screwed no i took i took the truck and i drove straight to the mechanic and i said i want you to go through this thing bumper to bumper roof to ground i want every single thing that's wrong with it fixed i want it to be like a new truck four thousand dollars later i got um they replaced the rack and pinion they replaced the rotors the drums the calipers um, they replaced the oil, they flushed the radiator, they did the fuel injection. I mean, dude, they did everything you could possibly do to this. They, they, um, replaced the AC switch cause it wasn't staying consistent. So to switch in the dash, I got a new control panel. So it's like a brand new truck. So I get it back a week later and I put led lights in. Everybody loves the nice white led lights, headlights, you know, and everything's good. Um, but I'm noticing that my truck will be like, like, um, you'll be driving and all of a sudden you'll get, you'll hear like a ding, ding, and then it'll hold ding and just keep dinging, but holding the ding and never stop dinging. And it's like, what in the hell is going on with this ding? And I would look at my son and he'd be like, what the hell is going on with this ding? And I would be like, I don't know. And then it would stop. Thank God, because I'm running out of air. But that's what it would do, right? So if your vehicle does that, right? Are you driving a Dodge and it, it'll be like, ding, ding. That's the start. I'm telling you right now, that's the start. Okay, you got a problem. All right, then what started happening is I would notice at night I'd be driving and all of a sudden my headlights would go off on. And then nothing for a little while. And then ding, ding, off on. And then nothing. And then... And then off on off on off on off on off 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 on off off on off on ding off 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 on I should I should have a mixing board a sound mixing board be like ding with the thing that off on off on but that's what it's doing I'm driving down the road and my lights like it's like I'm taking the switch off on not brights but like off on off on off on parking lights headlights right and then and it coincided with the ding. And then I started noticing it, doing it more often. This is a very quick, steady decline uh, of my lights in my vehicle. Then, by chance, I turned on my interior light, and my interior light is doing it the same. Now, listen. Hear that click? Hear that? I hope you hear that. That's the relay for the lights that's in the fuse box down uh, by the side of the uh, dash, right? When you open the door, there's a fuse box there. If you got a, a Dodge 2001 or similar, 97, probably to 2006, there's a fuse panel right there, right? And that's the relay. It's not a bad relay. The relay is being energized, de-energized, energized, de-energized. 
and that's only your parking light relay. That has nothing to do with your headlights. You can take that out, your parking lights turn off, but your headlights stay on. So that's not the problem, right? So we got the dinging doing weird dinging. We got the headlights and, and parking lights front and back flashing all types of different ways. And if you don't park after about 10 minutes of it flashing all types of different ways, they just stay off. And so now you're driving around in the rain or in the dark with no headlights, right? Sound familiar? Is that happening to you? Flashing lights uncontrollably, headlights, parking lights, tail lights, interior lights, weird clicking, right? That's what's going on. Then you might notice that you don't have your door locks working. That's why I said it's important that I tell you that my truck has key fob and power door locks. So then you might, you might realize you go to lock or unlock your door and it won't work. So it's like, what in the world, right? And then the uh, key fob, you go to walk away and hit the key fob to lock your doors and the key fob don't work. And you're like, okay, something really weird's going on here, right? So then you turn around and you got crazy flashing lights, interior, exterior, all around the vehicle, but not affecting the brake lights. The brake lights are working, third brake lights working. You got the loss of power door locks. You have to manually lock all your doors. You lose your key fob. What does all that tie into? What controls all of those things that would cause everything to go bad at one time, usually after it's heat related? Because it doesn't do it first thing in the morning, it takes about 15 to 20 minutes. And it would just be as I get to work, my lights would start acting crazy and when I'm clocking in and going to park my truck, other people would be like, what the hell is this dude doing over there? And I'd be like, man, I'm tweaking, dude. <laughs> my truck is tweaking. But so, I digress. <laughs> Let me get back on point. So the point is there's one common denominator and that's this thing. This is called a timing control module, okay? And I, I, I know I did a good shot for the thumbnail, but look at those numbers, okay? Screenshot this right now if you have to. I just wanted to make sure I look good in the screenshot. This is a small little unit. It's in my hand right here, right? It's a small little unit and it actually goes in the kick plate down on the left by your left foot. There's a kick plate. I'll show you, I'll show you all this, right? It's got three bolts. See, there's three holes, one, two, three. It's got three bolts, uh, 5 16th head, I believe. 99% sure, because I used a nut driver to take it out. Um, and it's got three um, wire bundles that you just push the little release and pull them out. So take the three bolts out, hold this in your hand, disconnect the three wire uh, clips, swap it out, okay? It's important to know that this ends in uh, the diamond, the part number is 560454528H. Okay, look underneath the barcode, see where it says 2AH. Hopefully, that'll focus for you. Okay, so that 2AH is uh, very different than a 1. A 2 means you have the system with the key fob and all that sort of stuff. So you can program this, I think, for your key fob. I think that's why it's two. Also, it doesn't say base. Where this says um, 0381, I believe. Yeah, where this says 0381 in the middle, by the bottom barcode, in the middle of the white sticker to your, that side, whatever way you're looking at it, uh, it says 0381, you might see the word base. B-A-S-E, capital letters. If you have a key fob for your current Dodge, Dakota, Durango, um, I believe this also works with the Ram um, and maybe the Jeep, I don't know, but you know, it's all Chrysler. Um, if you don't have the key fob and power locks and all that, um, then you get the one that's called base. I don't know if you can use the 2AH in place of the base, but if you put the base in when you're supposed to have the 2AH, you're not gonna have the ability, I believe, to power lock your doors from inside your vehicle or to use a key fob. So you have two models. You have base and you have the one that does not say base. The one that does not say base has the 2AH at the end of the serial number. That's why it was important for me to brag and show out on my 2001 Dodge Durango SLT crew cab with key fob because it matters. And I wanna make sure you guys get the right one. eBay, <coughs> excuse me, eBay, anywhere from 
a hundred to two hundred bucks uh, with shipping, depending on who you shop from, and um, fixed my problem instantly. First, I thought it was the headlight switch, and because you know that controls your headlights, your parking lights, and your dome light. And I was like, well, it's got to be the switch. Eighty dollars later, it wasn't the switch. Luckily, I bought it from AutoZone online. It came in. I tried it instantly. And I took it back to AutoZone personally the next day and got my $80 back. That's when I bought this. Um, so you can buy them from the dealer if you want. Probably going to cost you anywhere from three dollars to $500. You can order them through like Goodyear or something like that. You could probably find it brand new or reconditioned from like Rock Auto or something like that. So one more time, there's your part number. 5604544. Five two a h, or it'll be one a h, I believe. Um, but just start looking. It's called a timing control module, so TCM. Okay. Um, they also call them power control modules. This is not the ECM. This is not the big expensive thousand dollar unit. Although mechanics will charge you a thousand dollars. All right. It's so eleven minutes into this shit. Let me show you where this thing's located. So right here is the fuse panel. Oh, and these things are hard to open. And this is the clicking that you hear. That's your relay for your parking lights, okay? That's not where it is. That has nothing to do with this, and you don't need it. That's, that's not the problem. It's right here. It's behind here. So to get this out, all you do is you pull this up. It's not even bolted down, all right? Pull this up. Just pull it up and then grab this. Mine doesn't have a bolt and pull. That's it. Probably had a bolt. Maybe it had a bolt at one time. It might be a bolt up in there in the front, but I don't know. But here it is right here. One, two, three bolts. And there's the three, the three wire clips. So you just push the button in right here and pull the bundle out. And that's it. Push the button in, pull the bundle out. I took the three bolts out. I held this in my hand. I took the three wires out. I put the three wires in. I started to truck up and everything was good. I put it back together. Now, there is something that we need to talk about. One more thing. And that's going to be once you change this out, you no longer have an operational key fob. So you need to get uh, the key fob reprogrammed to the new TCM or power control module, timing control module. It's actually called a TCM, timing control module. Um, and to do that, you can go to Amazon and you can order the Dorman key fob programmer that you plug into the uh, OBD reader. You know, that, that crazy looking plug that all the vehicles have and the mechanics use. So Dorman makes that. Now, you need to know it for your model of your vehicle. All right. Mine's like um, the Dorman 6144, I believe, and it comes in today. Really super simple. You plug it in. You plug a little box, plug the box right into your, you turn on the key, but not the engine. You plug it in and it's going to do a little noisy thing. And then you're going to hold down the key fob buttons and it's going to program into your new timing control module because this is what opens and closes. This is where your power, your uh, power locks go through. So um, then you have a working, your, your key fobs working again. It comes with a key fob. The Dorman, it's like 60 bucks. You can find them on Amazon. Dorman, D-O-R-M-A-N, I believe it is, or D-O-O-R-M-A-N. But it's the Dorman uh, key fob programmer. Like I said, my part number, I believe, was 6144. It comes in today. Super simple to do. And so you could take your old key fob, program it, and you can take their new key fob that comes with it and program that so you'll back you'll be back to having a spare. And if you have another spare key fob, you can program that too. You have... A time limit where you have to get them all programmed and then uh, that's it I understand you can then sell that Dorman key fob uh, unit t 
to somebody else if you want or go hook up a buddy and I don't know, whatever. But anyways, very long video. I know. I hope this helps. I'm gonna I'm I'm just I'm not even gonna really edit. I'm just gonna blend these clips together and get it up on the interwebs. Alright guys. Uh I'll see you later.